Well, a very good morning from Phuket and today we're going to be taking a look at the area known as Suri. The reason why I'm starting at the beach here in Surin is because of course Surin's beach is a lovely beach and a very strong feature of this area. Of course as you can see behind me the weather not fantastic today. Again we've had a storm in the early hours this morning about two or three o'clock so the sea as you can see whipped up a little bit. Definitely ideal conditions looking at the waves there for surfers today. Now of course here in Thailand this month June is well known for being the rainy season, so storms are expected. However, some years are worse than others. I would say this year we have experienced quite a lot of rain and we are having quite a few storms. They haven't finished yet and they have forecast more storms for the rest of this week. So I am trying to do the videos in between the weather, which is actually proving quite difficult. Yesterday I wanted to go out and do some filming, but again it was raining. It seems to have changed. It was raining late afternoon, but now it seems to be raining in the morning time, not so much in the afternoon. Today I'm out just about lunchtime. It's coming up to lunchtime about one o'clock now here in Surin. So we're going to take a look at this area and see what's happening. I have had a quick ride through Surin on the way in and, and through before I made my way down to the beach and to be honest I did a video 12-14 months ago on this particular area again I haven't seen a lot of changes from the video that I've done in fact if anything it's actually got a little bit worse so I've made my way to the one end of the beach and just to give you an idea where we're standing I'm closest to Bantau of course Surin is sandwiched in between Bantau and Kamalar so if you're staying in the Surin area you're going to get the benefits of both of those two other areas as well such as the restaurants and shops Bantau is only a few minutes by car or motorbike from Surin and Kamalar is probably five or ten minutes by motorbike or car so you get the benefits of all three areas as I've said Surin area isn't that large as you will see as we take a look around the town but I wanted to start on the beach because when the weather is nice and the sun is shining this beach is an absolute lovely beach I will mention one thing it does drop away into the sea quite quickly the beach here so if you're coming over with younger children then I would advise you to keep an eye on the children because it can get quite deep quite quickly that's my experience of this beach but apart from that this is a lovely lovely beach as I mentioned we have had and we are having storms at the moment so just bear that in mind as we're walking along the beach we did have a storm the early hours this morning so it has whipped up the sea and it still is very very active so let's now make our way along the beach. You're going to notice there's a lot of debris that's been washed in from the storms. Now the end where we've just been standing, here yeah, there is a rocky area so I guess that would be good if you wanted to do a bit of snorkeling in and around the rocks and then as you pan round it gives way to a lovely sandy area the only thing as I've mentioned with Surin Beach that I've found in the past it does drop away quite sharply when you enter the water so it can get deep quite quickly so Surin Beach before used to have a lot of shops and restaurants along this area but they've all been moved away and now all we've got is umbrellas, sun loungers, which I actually think is better for the beach area. It actually looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. There are some small, smaller restaurants, but they're not permanent structures. The government moved all the buildings that were along this area here, just in front of us, away. Some time ago that was. And then you've got this large area of sand, really nice, the beaches. You can see the sand yourself, really fine. 
lovely sand, no shale on this beach. See the guys there cleaning up, or trying to clean it, clean up. <laughs> there I can see a few smaller restaurants I guess where they're serving some food and also refreshments so you're gonna have some facilities I did notice as I came onto the beach area just down further down the beach you're gonna see quite a few mobile vendors with a small motorbike and sidecar selling all sorts of drinks and food so if you are coming to Surin around the beach area you're not going to have a problem finding anything to eat and drink so I'm just making my way now towards the back edge of the beach where you're going to see the food vendors the smaller stalls what a cab cheerful guy there. A lot of the areas around the beach have actually improved rather than getting worse. But today isn't the greatest day for filming Surin's beach to be honest with the waves. There's a lot of wind about today so apologies if the microphone's picking any wind up. This area I suppose is sort of the centre area of the beach. Um, I have noticed the road leading down to Surin Beach it was very bumpy before but that's all been renewed so there are some benefits to the current situation let me just pop my mask on apologies if the sound is a little bit more muffled but I am coming in an area now where there's people so I've got to accept the fact that we need to be wearing masks as I was saying some of the benefits of the current position is I have noticed improvements on the roads in and around Phuket they have been tidying up the power cables and the, the general cables that you see hanging in the street. A lot of areas have now had those cables put underground and they are looking a lot better. Nice little area here. And grab something to eat from one of these vendors and then sit down there at the table overlooking the beach. How nice. Very, very nice. stuff on offer here got a cap Ooh, fish barbecue chicken I see a jet ski there I don't see any boards to say it's up for hire definitely wouldn't want to be going out on one today that's for sure now I'm just going to turn and show you this road that I was on about this is the main road leading down to the beach this was a few years ago in not such great condition very bumpy but it's all been renewed now as you can see and it's quite nice so as you can see plenty of choice when it comes to food and drink no shortage sort of cap Thank you. <laughs> uh, really nice Surin Beach. When you get the weather, it's fantastic. Even today, with the, the higher waves and the high wind, it's still a nice place to be, to be fair. I'm just going to walk over here. I'm not going to walk all the way to the other end of the beach. I'm just going to stop around here. I've got quite a few people mulling around the beach area that I've noticed, enjoying the beach not noticed this before so this must be something recent a recent addition to the beach very nice but I'm going to make my way now into the town and show you the position in the town got a cab and we're going to have a walk into the town rather than going on the motorbike because I'm alone today so it's, it's a little bit more difficult 
when I'm alone to actually ride the motorbike and do the filming. Now bearing in mind we're about three weeks away now from the 1st of July. I'm just going to move my mask down again now. Hopefully the sound's going to be a little bit better. There's nobody around me. Okay, well I've made my way to the top of the road leading down to the beach. So just behind me are the big sign as you can see, Surian Beach. You've got the main road. This road runs from, well, if you're going straight forward, you'll go towards Bang Tau. And then if you're going in the other direction, that will take you to Kamala. I have noticed that large building project underway. One thing I might have mentioned on my last video, it seems that building hasn't really slowed here. Even though we have the current position ongoing in the world, it doesn't seem to have slowed the building work in Phuket, which I'm quite surprised about. They seem to still be building as much as ever. So first of all, we're going to take a walk down this road, and this is the one that's running parallel with the beach, I guess, heading towards Bantau. Bantau is only a few minutes down this road. We're going to take a walk along here because there are shops, restaurants, hotel accommodation situated along here. There's the Novotel, I've noticed this morning. I'm not quite sure whether it's open. I can't really tell without going in and asking. It sort of looks open. There is life there, but there doesn't look like there's a lot of life. So let's make our way down here first and then we'll come back or I'll come back and then start again from this point going into the town I guess you'd call of Surin. It's, as I've mentioned it's not that big. So first off we've got a 7-Eleven. Okay, we don't, we, we don't have a 7-Eleven as you can clearly see. That is actually closed. I don't know whether it's still there i think it is because of the machines are still there it's just closed off at the moment and then next door to that we have a wine bar and bistro called the ninth glass i don't know whether it's still there then we have a property next door that's for sale or rent the bed at the beach so i'm guessing that's a guest house that also looks closed another one uh lemongrass house i'm guessing that's sort of products for skin etc that's also closed then we've got the Surin Bay Inn, which I'm guessing is a restaurant. I'm just going to ask this guy whether they're open or not. Good afternoon, are you open? No, no you're not open. Okay, no problem. I just thought maybe you might be open. Any plans on opening soon? No, you're not planning on opening for the 1st of July. When I see people walking and coming, the airlines come then you'll open. Okay, so that's a fair comment. So you, you, you don't think you're going to be opening for the 1st of July. You, you obviously know about the Phuket sandbox project that's, yes, yes, that's yes, supposed to be going on. You've not got any plans on it. We're, we're not going to have people coming here. Okay. I'd like to see people uh, in everywhere, but there's only so many tourists that come. I totally agree. I totally agree. There's only so many. I mean, the UK now, what they've got, people have just gone to put Portugal, yeah. because Portugal was classed as a as a green green light. Yeah. And then what happened? The people just arrived in Port Portugal, wife and two kids, three kids, whatever. Yeah. Enjoying themselves, and then they changed Portugal to the mines. Yeah, which, which I saw that. They've got to pay. Somebody with two kids, they've got to pay eight lots of tests and they've got to put yeah. uh, yeah. themselves away for ten days. Yeah, I quite, I quite agree. I, I take it, you've, uh, have you lived in Thailand long? Have you been here long? 20 years. So, a fair amount of time. 21 yeah. years. Yeah, okay. And, and what's your take on this current situation? Well, what's, what's the area of sewering like for them? What would you say? Honest, honest opinion. Honest opinion? When, when, when you've got family marts shut down and yeah. you've got 7 Eleven shut down. Yes. I know what you get, where you're going with this. Uh, uh, that says it all, really, doesn't it? It says it all. Yeah. Okay, that was a very interesting chat with Terry there that owns the Surin Bay Inn. He's been closed since New Year and he's not got any plans at the moment to open his business. He has got a restaurant and accommodation. I think he said 24 rooms. He did have 29 staff. He's now got two. And he said to me, when you've got places like Family Mart next door, 
that are closed and also the 7-Eleven that we've just recently passed that are closed that basically says it all to him so he said he's not in any rush at the moment to open up so he's not got any plans for the 1st of July he said he's going to be looking maybe towards Christmas December November December is a more realistic time but he's going to see what sort of numbers are coming back first before he decides to do anything fortunately Terry said that he owns that property it's not rented so he's not got high rents to pay because the rents here can be quite high in Surrey so people that have had high rent as you can see from right in front of me these businesses these have got clearly gone they're literally falling down they're in that disrepair unfortunately not a great sight and there's one two three four four in a row there four or five businesses there in a row i don't know what they were before i'd have to look at one of my older videos that i've done quite a few years ago to see what was originally there i'm guessing they were well the one was a massage shop as i mentioned on my last video massage shops can now open up and you will see a few in this area that are open that i noticed this morning as we're walking around i think there may have been a a restaurant there not quite sure what the other businesses were but they've gone the businesses next to them closed looks like they've gone as well got a fashion shop there ladies and gents tailors that's empty so that's gone we're now coming up to the twin palms I asked Terry whether he knows whether these hotels are open because I have drove past this morning and they it's hard to tell whether they're open or whether they've just got a skeleton staff there is some life there but I don't know whether they're actually open and taking bookings and I don't know whether they're going to be open for July the 1st. So the one in front of us there is the Twin Palms. I'm going to take a walk up this road and hopefully trying to make this video a little bit shorter than the one that I did on Qatar because that was a very long video at nearly 50 around 50 minutes long but Qatar is quite a large area so videos that I'm going to be doing Patong and Caron these are going to be very long videos because I can't cover the area in a short period of time and as I mentioned on the last video I want to give a true picture of the position here I don't want to give a picture looking through rose colored glasses now I know there are a lot of youtubers at the moment covering the situation here on the island some of them live here some of them don't some of the videos that I've seen I, I'll be honest with you I don't follow youtubers that cover anything to do with Thailand because I don't want to have any influence from anybody else I want my own sort of channel my own style my own way of doing it right or wrong but that's how I want to do it so I try not to take any influence from other people so I don't follow any but I have seen from time to time some people's videos I'm not going to mention names but some of the videos are not realistic representations of how Phuket is currently not at all not by a long way and this is something that I believe in strongly I believe that if Phuket is going to move forward and start to recover it needs to be truthful we need to be honest going forward not try to mislead people tell lies as like in the past we need to have a fresh start here in Phuket people's attitudes need to change and this is the only way we're going to start and see tourism come back start to appreciate the tourists treat them correctly not just be out to fleece everybody that comes to the island because it's just giving a negative picture of Phuket. Now you can see the Novotel in front of me there. There is some life down the bottom. I'll just... Swati Cap? Uh, Novotel open? No. Close. Okay, Copen Cap, thank you. Okay, I've just, I've just asked these guys here. They're, they're sitting outside by the, the taxi thing. They're saying the Novotel is currently closed. They're going to know because they're sitting outside every day. So, again, I would imagine Twin Palms is closed if the Nose Hotel is closed. All these hotels, the larger ones, are currently closed. Have they got any plans to open for the 1st of July? Honestly, I can't tell you that. I, I personally don't think they will, but I may be wrong. So the last few days I've spent quite a bit of time looking online as I said I would on my Kata video basically to find as much information out as I can about Phuket's sandbox trial I guess you're going to call it project whatever you want to call it and I wanted to really find a, official sources not so much unofficial sources and the closest I can come to that is the TAT's website they have got a part that focuses on um, Phuket's sandbox trial but they have they do say at the 
top of the website that of course it all the information that's listed there has to be officially verified by the Royal Thai government and it has to be signed off by the Prime Minister as yet that hasn't happened he has given the green light but he hasn't signed the official document to say that Phuket on the 1st of July can officially open so until that happens it's not official so there's a lot of rumors going around as regards whether it will happen or not nobody really knows until the Prime Minister actually signs that paper but the TAT has got a lot of information on their site but they do make it clear that the site may be updated and the last few days we have seen a lot of updates and it does refer to the SHA as regarding that they recommend that tourists need to stay in SHA accommodation where possible eat at SAA approved restaurants and, and use tours SHA approved tours and things like that so I was looking at what SHA really means because I didn't know I had only heard about it just before I made the last video which was the CASA video I'd only briefly heard about it then and I wasn't quite sure what it actually entails but what it is is basically to say that the business that whatever that may be whether it's a hotel a restaurant a shop whatever it is has SHA approval meaning that they have 70% a minimum of 70% of their staff has been vaccinated already so that's what the SHA means so now we're going to carry on making our way up this road as you can see there there's a pizzeria that's closed that was closed the last time I was in Surin because I believe I showed that and it's still closed no sign of life there looking at it it looks like they've got accommodation as well because I can see a sign just there Surin suite and then obviously a building behind it which I'm guessing is an accommodation block but that looks closed to me there's no life down there it may be open but it doesn't look like it is um, then we have a tailors again motorbikes outside are they open not quite sure doesn't look like it now there's no lights on there and there's a sign in the window to contact contact a number so I presume if you require something they will come but they're not opening because there's just not enough people walking around as you can see let's just take a quick look at the road that we've walked up just one guy crossing the road from the taxi rank there so not a lot of life around here we have a couple of motorbikes for rent then a small mini mart come body cap laundry service so and they have a few things for the beach that you can buy as well then the unit next door fashion by the looks of it that's gone there's nothing in there a boutique resort that looks like it's gone to be honest it's completely empty inside the doors are, are slightly ajar but there's nothing inside there so I'm guessing that that resort is now closed down shop next to that empty the Surin chiller house Surin sunset tours again doesn't look like it's there any longer there are some pieces inside whether the business still exists I don't know whether it's just temporary closed I'm not sure restaurant next door closed we have a massage shop this is one of the few that is open sorry cap so they are open again as I mentioned in the last video only recently massage shops could reopen up but it's nice to see a few places open with so many businesses empty it's just not a great site now some people may say that my series of videos are not helping Phuket in the recovery but I disagree with that because I think as I mentioned earlier going forward we need to be truthful with the picture out here we don't need to tell people lies and, and deceive people because it's quite easy now with access to social media that if you start painting a picture that's not true and when people come over to the island it's not going to take very long for people to start posting the same images that you can see right in front of me now and this is only going to make the situation worse I think going forward we need to be honest show people how it is it's not going to be easy to recover from the situation that we've got here in Thailand of course the main tourist areas have been very very heavily affected I feel 
for all the businesses here as a business owner I feel very strongly that we need to have the right attitude going forward if we want to encourage people to come back to Phuket. The days of fleecing the tourists really need to end now and we need to look after those people that decide to come because in my opinion the playing fields have now been levelled and there's many places around Asia where people can go for a holiday so you need to give them a reason why to come and that reason is because of the hospitality shown, the, the choice, the beautiful scenery, all these things that are still here, we need to show them that and not go forward with a load of false truths. We need to be honest and that's what this series of videos is trying to do, trying to show people that yes Phuket has been heavily affected but it's still here, it's still going to be welcoming tourists and we will be able to build a better Phuket than what it was before because I know I've spoken to a lot of people and I've seen a lot of things online about people posting Phuket is expensive, there's too many scams there, they're ripping people off, all these things and to a degree some of it, I'm going to say some of it, not all of it is true and the reason why I say some of it is true because of course some people come over to the island and have a bad experience and then they feel they've got an axe to grind and they want to make that experience sound ten times worse than what it actually was and I understand that goes on rightly or wrongly but it goes on but what we need to do now is put all those things in the past and go forward with the right attitude to encourage tourism I really hope that that's the case I have spoken to quite a few business owners that do have a similar take on what I've said as regards that they need to start paying more attention to tourists, looking after them better. There are businesses that have been not really um, fair with the tourists. They've been trying to hike up the prices unnecessarily and this has caused the bad publicity that Phuket has had. Um, for a number of years before the current situation that was going and I wanted to start my channel and indeed this was one of the reasons why I started my channel because I, I'm all for tourism in Thailand I love Thailand that's why I've chosen to live here there's no doubt about that and I think Thailand has a lot to offer the tourists even now yes it is a little bit more expensive than what it was when I first started coming here 20 years ago well just over 20 years now I remember 72 baht to the pound as I've mentioned before that was a lot of money then so it would go a long way but over the years unfortunately exchange rates have changed and the money doesn't go as far now and of course we have had increases in prices not necessarily everything but some things have got more dearer there's also a lot more available than there was 20 years ago you couldn't buy certain things that you can easily buy now I remember struggling to just get simple things like cheese and uh, certain things that I like from the UK I just couldn't get them over here I used to have to bring them with me because they wasn't available but now there's a lot more available there's people importing these products but of course they come at a price unfortunately and you have to decide on whether you want to pay that price or not Well, I've made my way back to the main road and we're now going to take a look at what I call the main area of Surin. I think that was an Italian Thai food restaurant. Doesn't look like it's open at the moment. It's still there. Ticket booth for tours. It's still there but not open. Shoe shop. I think it's still there, again not open, so we have an exchange shop or booth there, that's closed. We have a unit selling swimwear, the last time I came here that was actually empty, but I do now see some swimwear inside, so I'm presuming the business is still here. It looks like it's open actually, because I can see lights and it does say it's open, so that one is open. Next door we have... I believe this used to be a pizza restaurant when I came the last time it was still a pizza restaurant and they've changed it into new units but they're all empty I don't see any any businesses in there in the, at the moment possibly in a, at some point in the future there will be businesses going in there a small massage shop studio called relax massage and spa it's not open at the moment when is it closed Thursday so today is Thursday so closed on a Thursday so I would imagine that will be open because massage shops can open 
there's a small calf, I guess you'd call it. They do Thai food and drinks and different stuff here. That's not open today. Whether they're just closed today, I'm not sure, or whether they are closed at the moment. Looking at the other side, we have a pharmacy that is open. Looks like a lingerie shop that has clearly gone and is for rent. A laundry service. I think that's still there and open. We have the steakhouse. Don't know whether that's open or not at the moment. I think as far as I can see, it's still there. It may be open, it may not. We have a 7-Eleven just here. This one is actually open. There's a number of mini marts in this area that are closed and there's a few that are open. So there are some mini marts, if you're coming here you're going to be able to find some. But there's not as many as there used to be. Another exchange booth closed there. Restaurant. The Blue Lagoon. That looks like it's still there, could be possibly open. It's lunchtime now. They're obviously not opening for lunch. Oh, hang on, um, it's bigger than what I thought. Actually, it does look open. So, the Blue Lagoon there, I was just looking at that one, one part of it. But that is open. So, there's a restaurant there. You're going to be able to get some food if you come in here. Looks a reasonably nice restaurant from the outside. I don't know what the food's like. I've not eaten there before. And then there's a few smaller shops here. Again, looks like restaurant. quite sure whether that's open or not because there's no tables outside. We have a small restaurant here. That is open. There's the Surin Sunset Hotel across the road. That looks open because there's quite a lot of motorbikes at the front. I'm guessing that's open. And then we have a salon and a small that's actually looks like a coffee shop they're open so they've got coffees 35 baht for iced coffees hot coffees 30 baht and then cocktails 30 up to 69 baht body cab barber shop that's nice to see open the 90s seafood closed and then we have the Tesco, Lotus Tesco Mini down there that is open, the premises here there's a few open and there's quite a few closed another boutique there, that's closed We've got a massage shop across the road I don't want to keep spinning the camera back back as a forward, it might make you feel giddy if I keep doing that. But there's a massage shop across the road that I can see is open. But these two units, as you can see, empty. I think they were empty the last time I came. A skateboard shop, that's open. So if skateboard's your thing, you're going to be able to find it here in Surin. Then a beachwear shop, that is closed. Massage and salon, that's open. The goodie cat, that's closed. Another massage shop here, right in front of us, that's open. So a number of massage shops are actually open. I'm not surprised because they have been closed for quite some time. We have units here, empty for rent. Then we have Lotus Tesco, that's open. A small Thai restaurant across there, that's open. We've got another Thai restaurant here to the left hand side, that's closed off. Whether it's just closed today, I don't know. So I'm going to just walk a little bit further so you can see all the way down Surin because just at the bottom of this road, that's really where Surin ends and Bantau starts. So there's the 7-Eleven. You can clearly see that that's no longer open and it looks emptied. So I don't know whether it's going to come back at some point, it may do but it's definitely been emptied for the time being. There's no stock in there whatsoever. The shop next door to it, the same, closed and emptied. That was a massage shop. And then we have another shop next door to that, 
which again you can see yourself it's all windows covered over whether the business is still there I don't know it just says closed but I'm guessing it's empty inside on the opposite side of the road just down from the plaza that's right in front of us that's the main plaza there there's a few shops in there the shops next to it there's a bathroom shop there that looks like it's still there whether it's open or not I don't know and then a couple of units in front they're clearly gone and then here we have shop that's gone clothing shop still there that looks open it's got lights on so that's still still there and open the shop next to that is gone and I think we're almost to the end there are a few more shops up here there's a couple that are open and then the rest are all closed and that really is the whole of Surin as I mentioned at the start Surin is not that bigger area but you do have the benefit of being very close to Bantau which of course you've got the shops and all that area which I'm going to do a video on I'm not going to talk too much about Bantau because I want to go over there and do a video Terry did mention that the Chantelay area of Bantau is also very quiet which is unusual because there's a lot of expats people that live there it's a very expensive area uh, it's a wealthy area there's a lot of people that live over there have got a lot of money or that that's the impression it gives me because the properties are quite expensive so it's an affluent area is the word that I'm looking for but Terry was telling me from the business that we saw earlier the guy who's got that business he was telling me that he's been over there a few times and it's very very quiet so that's surprising so we have what was a restaurant whether it's still there I don't know there are some tables and chairs but it's definitely not open there's a spa there Thai spa that's closed we've got units here again next to this plaza that one's gone that one's gone in fact all of those are gone apart from the very end one I think and then we have a small restaurant across the road which looks open and still there or it's still there maybe I'm wrong about being open I don't know maybe it's closed today but it's still there and again fashion shop what we got oh fashion clothing and shoes bar products that don't look like it's open I might be wrong don't know no it's closed that is I can see the chain on the door so that's closed and then we've got next to that unit for rent or premises for rent don't know what it was before but that's for rent and then we have a shop selling china vases cups plates etc so kitchenware I guess you'd call it and, and china products that's open and then we have units empty there another skateboard shop that I can see there looks like it's open because there's a board outside that I think was a restaurant that's up for rent or sale and then that's about it we have a small motorbike repair shop that's open that was open the last time I came well there you have Surin I hope you've enjoyed this look at Surin as I say it's not a massive area so hopefully this isn't going to be as long a video as my Kata video however the Caron videos the Patong videos expect long ones of those because I want to try and capture as much of those areas as I can just like today I want to walk around as much as I can Patong probably won't be able to walk around every single bit because that is a very large area I'm going to make my way back to where I've parked the bike which is at the beach which is a fair old walk from where I'm standing right now we're three weeks away from July this is the position in Surin Beach currently you've seen it yourself you know what to expect if you're planning on coming to Phuket and indeed staying in Surin in the next six months honestly my personal opinion I don't think we're gonna see much change over the next six months as that guy mentioned Terry that owns a business here he's not got any real plans until he starts to see some influx of tourism coming back to the island then he's gonna consider opening up and I've got a feeling that a lot of the businesses in the tourist areas are gonna feel very much the same so I hope you've enjoyed this look at Surin not a massive area but I've tried to cover as much of it as I can in fact I think I've covered it all apart from a few soys that I may not have walked down but I've covered the main area the beach 
beach area etc and I hope that's given you some info and knowledge to how it is at the moment and what to expect should you be arriving here in the next six months now if you've enjoyed the video don't forget to give it the old thumbs up because it, one it helps the video and secondly it also helps the channel talking about the channel if you haven't already subscribed to my channel then please do consider subscribing don't forget to check out the links down below in the description all my social media if you haven't already checked my facebook group out then please do so a lot of information in the group that i don't cover on my channel accommodation rooms to rent different things in there that's not always on the channel so do go and check that out it's well worth it if you're thinking of coming to Thailand there's going to be some information and also you can talk to other people within the group that are either planning on visiting Thailand or who have visited Thailand previously so you can sort of pick their brains on any places to visit and restaurants etc because of course I don't know every single place restaurant accommodation on the island because it is quite a large island the island of Phuket if you if you'd like to leave a comment then leave that in the section down below I'm always interested on hearing your thoughts and comments well I think that's covered everything and that just leaves me to say as always thanks for watching and until next time you take care and I'll catch you on the next one